We power on the thermal camera and plug in the network cable. Connect the other end of the cable to the switch and router which is in the same network segment with the computer. Within about 20 seconds, we open the IP search tool. Click search. Now you can see that the default IP address of the device has been searched on the computer. Then let's check the IP of the computer. Right-click the network, click the properties, Ethernet details. You can see that the IP address of the computer is zero segment. So we need to change the IP address of the thermal camera to zero segment as well. We can modify it directly through the IP search tool. Select the IP address which need to be modified. Then change the third place to zero. The fourth place can be any number which cannot conflict with the IP address of other device on the NAND. This gateway needs to be changed too. Okay, now the IP address has been modified. Let's open the computer client. Now login. The default username is admin. Password is 123456. Click OK. This is the input box for the IP. We entered the IP address just now modified. Click Connect. Now we are already connected. We input the IP address, click Connect. After successfully connected, the status of this site will be displayed online. Here is the visible light display. Here are the thermal imaging display. Then let's look at these icons below. This is the icon for menu recording. Here's the folder for menu recording storage. For this menu recording, when we click it, it will turn red, which means it's recording now. One more click means to cancel the recording. Here's the folder where the video was saved. Here's the folder where the capture image was saved. The captured image will be displayed in this position. The blank area here will display all the temperature pictures of the captured faces. This is the setup. This is the alarm icon. When screening for people with high temperature, it will alarm and the icon is flashing here. This position is exporting. We can choose it. For example, to export the records to the desktop. The records captured here will be displayed in the fire. We click OK, then back to the desktop. This is the fire that just came out. We open it. Here's the fire exported. Close it and go back here. Here means clean. After clean, there were no records anymore. It will become zero, and then if we export it again, there is no data. Let's look at these parameter settings. First is the alarm switch. If we turn it off when screening for people with high temperatures above 37.3 centigrade, it will not alarm. I make it now by default. The second line is the time of the alarm. It's 10 seconds. That means it will flash for 10 seconds. This is for phase capture interval. Default is 1000 milliseconds. This is phase duplication. Just turn it on by default. Let's mainly look at the setup of this phase detection zoom switch. If we turn it off, it will measure the temperature of the whole picture. But if we turn it on, they only can set one error. For example, click this and we redraw the frame. Then click OK. That means only the temperature will be measured in this area of the frame. People outside the area will not be measured. Click Save. The next one is the setting for the face size check switch. If it's off, then it doesn't matter what face size we set. Whether the person is big or small, as long as it's within the temperature measurement distance, it can measure the temperature. If we turn it on, click this. If the face in our screen is less than this value, it will not measure the temperature. 
if the face is bigger than the frame, it won't measure the temperature as well. Then here are the settings for the capture folder. The captured faces are saved in this folder. For example, we keep it in this folder. Here are the settings of the mode. We will normally change it to auto correction mode, or we can change it to black body correction mode. In black body correction mode, we need to click this to match the black body. We are going to use the mouse to frame the black body area. Then click OK. Click Save. This is the black body correction mode. Then this is the black body detection number of times, 34 is 6 times. This is the temperature compensation. For example, when detecting comparatively low temperature in some ambient temperature, we can turn it up a bit so that we can get a more accurate temperature. You can also set it by 10 periods. This is the alarm temperature limit of the client. If it exceeds 37.3 centigrade, it will alarm. Or we can change it to 37. This is the lowest temperature setting. The temperature less than this will not be measured. The position is for the modification of the temperature unit. The default is centigrade. We can also change it to Fahrenheit degree and then click Save. We can see this one is the folder we just set up. Now the setup is com complete. Let's say how to change the timing of thermal camera and also how to turn the field light on or off. First, uh, we open the IP search tool. Click search, then double click the IP address of the thermal camera. It will automatically jump to the lock box. Both the default username and the password is admin. Here we can modify its language. Click setting. Its version information can be seen here. Then we can click Time and click PC. Click OK. Now the time of the thermal camera will automatically synchronize with the computer time. Let's have a look at here. This position is the entrance to upgrade the firmware. We click Browser and then choose Firmware, then click Upgrade. The second column is the button to restore the factory settings. We click here to restore the factory. Then the camera will revert to its default status. Here are the reboot button. We click reboot. The camera will automatically reboot. Then we will have a look at the field light. Click camera, choose the field light. The default is off. Then we turn it on. Click save. That means it's on automatically from 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Okay, we back now and turn it off, making default. Now we can set this fail night and the time. 